Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have seen the latest Equestria Girls video, and now I question why. Are you talking about the song with the phone? Yes, in both Spanish and English. Yeah, I wish James was here right now. Oh, talking about James, he may be coming on late because reasons. <laughs> but what do you think? I-, I thought it was fun, that video thingy. It was fun. It was, you know, just them going around, doing some goofy things and having a good time. Uh, I won't say I really enjoyed the song itself, mostly because of the lyric and rhyming scheme. Mm, to me, I find it nice. I, I don't know. I mean, it's out of context. So whatever is out of context is out of context. The only thing is that as a hook for the movie, there was no conflict to it. So I was like, well, is that just going to be the movie? This is fun in short bursts. Mm-hmm. But as a whole movie, this wouldn't fly. Yeah, but like I said, this is out of context. Because if you look at the whole shorts... By the way, the whole shorts, except for the song that was sang for the... What, preparation for the ball or something like that, whatever it is. Um, uh, shake Your Tail? Yeah, that one. It's all based on the novel that was written for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm kind of excited for it. Um, I'm not going to put it too high and I'm not going to put it too low. But eh, it's just another My Little Pony movie. So, yay. But anyway, uh-huh. we're not going to talk about the movies. That That's done on a later day, I hope. <laughs> Down the line. Indeed. Uh, today, we're going to review the My Little Pony micro comic. The Twilight arc, to be exact. So, Silver, what are your thoughts on this? Like, when you heard that they were going to do micros? Well, micros are a fascinating idea because they, you know, when you have the main six in a tale, you want everybody to have a role. Sometimes one member of the main six will stand out more in any story, but you never want to feel like someone got the shafted. Mm, true that, true that. So a micro, where a character gets to show, take center stage, and it's expected that it's about them, has a lot of great potential. And looking over, I've read all the micros, and looking over them, uh, you can kind of rank them where I think they showed a character at their best, and also at their worst. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that, because if you're talking about the whole micro as a whole, um, I I think I said this before in other episodes, where to me, the main six can be categorized like this for the micros. Rarity is number one. Pinkie Twilight is second, Pinkie Pie is third, Fluttershy is fourth, Apple, the uh, Applejack and Rainbow Dash are tied for last because their books are not that nice. Oh, okay, if we're ranking just the main six? Mm-hmm, yes, just the main six. My top is uh, Rarity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. followed by Pinkie. Then, normally I include Celestia and Luda and all, the, all them folks, but I think after that, I'd put Applejack just a little bit ahead of Twilight, then Rainbow, and unfortunately Fluttershy, my babe, is at the bottom. Oh, really? No. It's sadness. Hmm. To me, um, well, we're not going to review. That's a review for another day, but eh, well, um, I'll just hold my tongue. Today, we're going to review the Twilight Micro. And the Twilight Micro is an interesting one. After the whole return of Queen Chrysalis arc the, and that comics going, people were expecting something along that line, something along that awesomeness, and what we got was not we, what we expected. Well, but that's, uh, that could be a good thing. But you have to remember, this is kind of the very beginning of how things were. Like, um, for example, when we got the book, we were expecting, oh, nothing much, because this is the first time that they're doing it. Now, the the books are out and we got this micro, expectations were pushed way too high, I think. But again, that's, well, that's fan expectation and then expecting like each micro would be this grand adventure tale. And what we got here was more slice of life stuff. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Yeah. The show itself, I find the real meat is the slice of life. You know, every season is bracketed, it seems, by a save the world story, but I tune in to see how Pinky is dealing with her latest party. <laughs> or Rainbow wanting, you know, just to win the next competition. That ultimately doesn't mean much, but it means a lot to her. Mm, true that, true that. 
But one note about the micros and what makes them really good or bad, in my view, is that the best ones always seem to feature our heroines helping someone else. Oh, true that, true that. And for the first micro, Twilight, I think it's a start on telling the whole um, story of how what to expect from beyond this point. Mm-hmm. And um, let me just summarize the whole issue. Spoilers ahead, so if you haven't read it, please be warned. So anywho, on this issue, we have Twilight thinking about taking a test, which she is uh, really afraid of, like, you know, Twilight test. It's anonymous. Goes to Celestia. Celestia says, don't mind if we postpone the test because one of my workers, uh, the head librarian, not really librarian, what was it called again? Um, oh, uh, she's called Summer Main. Summer and Main? she is... She's the caretaker of the Royal Archives. Yeah, the Royal Archive. She hurt herself and Celestia asks Twilight to help her, which she goes and helps and discover that Summer Main is a cranky old person. This is the very typical cranky old person that says, get off my lawn kind of person. So, <laughs> yeah. So, at the start, as readers, we did not really like this, or this character in general. But as we move on, we get to see Twilight interacting with Summer Main and Summer Main talking to Twilight about books and stuff. And them bonding. It's like the old man from Up and that kid getting to know each other. That kind of scenario. Yes, very much. Mm-hmm. Before I move on, um, Summer Main has have one rule, and which is do not go to my private quarters. And near the end, they are bonded. They become friends. And... Twilight, being the curious person or pony that she is, take a sneak peek into the room and got found out by Summer Main. And they fought and Summer Main did not like that. And next day, asked Twilight to leave. At that point, Summer Main reveals to Twilight that she is Jade Singer. I forget to mention that, didn't I? But yeah, just that they just that Jade Singer was a very popular author and one of Twilight's favorites. Yeah, and to Jade's surprise, Twilight was not shocked because she already knew this was nothing new for Twilight. Twilight, being the detective that she was, spotted all the signs, and hey, this is Jade Singer. She didn't want to be brought out into the spotlight, so I'll respect that. After that, Jade Singer wrote more books and got back to Celestia because they're friends. I'm not doing a good synopsis because I'm not James. <clears throat> but <laughs> <laughs> not to worry. Yeah, but I'm just jumping through hoops because I need we need to talk about this. But anywho, um that's about the story about it in really quick summarization, which is not good. I wonder I feel in summarizing. But anywho, um what do you think about the comic? Well one, I think you did a fine job summarizing, so don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think going into this, people were expecting, I think, the micros to be grand adventure stories, much like, as you say, the return of Queen Chrysalis. Uh, so initial reactions to this were pretty negative. Uh, just that it wasn't, it was just sort of, well, that happened. Looking back on it, and also thinking, having watched season four, I actually appreciate it a lot more. Not just for how it set up how the micros would, would function, but also doing a lot more with Twilight's character than I think the show has done at times. Mm. There are there are a lot of cases where I feel like the comic surpasses the show in terms of characterization. Mm, true that, true that. I too do get that feeling with the books. Not, not only micros, but um, the comic books overall. But I think this could be attributed to what the comic can do and what um, and they're how freely they can do things, mm-hmm. because um, in certain scenes there's certain memes that happen in the books. Like for example, in the Queen Chrysalis arc, we got that one. Uh, we sorry, we got that clown from it appearing in the book. So yeah, it's certain things or certain things that are freely do- doable for the books instead of the show. And also, um, those pop culture references, like The Clown from It, are a big factor of any of the comics. Mm, mm, mm. And, and actually, that's one thing I feel like this comic didn't do as well, in comparison. 
So, so much to cover. <laughs> they did do a lot of reference, but those references are, how do I put this? Not too in your face. They did a uh, Call Me Baby uh, reference. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, they did much, but still, I, I do like what Jade Singer say about that song that Twilight sang. Uh, is this what your kids are listening to? And is that music? Attributing that Twilight could not sing and that song sucks. Yeah. But the fact thing is, with some of my favorite comics, those pop references like the clown from It, the Temple of Doom villain, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was, uh, yeah, they had a Fan of the Apple reference. All that happened in just one page. Oh, yeah. And you have, the, and you have this great option. Once you've read the story, you can go back and read it again mm-hmm. just to spot the great pop culture references. Mm. With with some of the micros, the references were more upfront, like singing "Call Me Baby," mm. "Call Me Main," <laughs> Main or ever. Yeah, and so it felt more overt. And I think subtlety is the better way to go with that. Mm. So that's one thing I think the micros didn't, as a whole, didn't really get down. I don't think so. To to me, it's kind of a in that situation. It's what Twilight's into at that moment in terms of what kids are into now with their songs and what show they're watching and influencing them. For example, if someone were to sing the Gangnam Style in the office or something like that where he's doing some work alone, and yeah, okay, warranted, it's the product of his time. And for Twilight, in this current time and setting, I could see that. Yeah, I don't have a problem with your singing. I just noticed that it's funny to say call, make a pop reference. Yeah, but still, but uh, still. Yeah, yeah. But uh, with Jade Singer, because or, or Summer Maine, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's known for most of it, I think that's where people sort of where this comic lost people because, as you say, she's the cranky older mentor uh, archetype. Who warms up to our main character? Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. For example, of this character, if you don't know, it's um, Jackie Chan's um, Karate Kid, or even Mr. Miyagi from the original Karate Kid, and also other shows like Up, for example, and also that Clint Eastwood movie. Did he do something like that? Gran Torino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a common archetype, but unfortunately, well, those movies had two hours to flesh out the character and really get let you see that growth. This comic only had, uh, oh, what was it, like 20, 25 pages? Mm-hmm. I, so I feel I feel yeah. like out of all the characters that the ponies helped over the micro series, she was one of the, she was one of the lesser distinguished ones. I mean, uh, the rarity micro thrives so well because of the hippie ponies. Oh yeah, Th- those ponies were flush out well but those those ponies with their conflict at the time, it's warranted they have more explanation to their story with yeah. Twilight and Jade Singer. To me, it fits in perfectly because okay, it's Twilight hanging out in a library. What more can you want? <laughs> like you go to a library, what action do you see? Not much. No, yeah. This is this is about all her history, which comes out at the end. Mm, mm, mm. But but this is where Twilight really shines the most. That one, she reveals, I'm really Jade Singer, and Twilight says, Yeah, I know. <laughs> like yeah. the 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 cliche would have been, Oh my gosh, you're Jade Singer. Yeah, yeah. But Twilight is smart. She saw what was right in front of her and respected that she wanted to be anonymous. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that and that really. You know, I won't say this was my favorite of the micros, but it bumped it up quite a bit. And also, this was a, something they mulled over during the Twilight's Kingdom finale, when they talk about how the for the Rainbow Arc, all of the main six have helped some pony. If we look at how many friends Twilight has outside of the main six mm-hmm. and Spike, it's really the princesses and her brother, mm. and maybe Trixie. Maybe. maybe. I mean, that's a huge maybe. Sophisto can defend it, but not us. No. no the, Trixie, she's at least a queen of Trixie. Mm, 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 mm. 
I've never seen Twilight really reach outside her clique for other people or ponies. That is a story or a situation where it's kind of arguable because in terms of okay, what we see in the show or what the show presents us is that. Like, she hangs out with her friends, the princess, sometimes go on grand adventures to search for something. But in my mind, in my head, or head canon talking about, is Twilight is everyone's friend in Ponyville. She goes say hi to the cakes. She goes to see Shirley sometimes to talk about books or whatever. And, you know, she just goes around like any normal townsfolks would do in that small town. Plus, she's a celebrity before the castle pops up. People sure want to talk to her. So, to me, it's kind of... Um, we are not shown and not told about what she does behind the scenes. It's a good headcanon, but I always hesitate in saying headcanon yeah. explains the show because that's the show asking the reader, okay, fill in the gaps for me because yeah. I'm not going to tell you uh, or show you. And I, I do agree that Twilight is friendly with the town's ponies, but it would be wonderful to see her interact yeah, yeah, with yeah. others more than just... What was it? Uh, the Showstoppers. She's she's walking with Cheer Lee, mm-hmm. giving rise to any number of shit fix. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But if you do remember in Season 3, that there's one episode, I thought it was Season 2, um, uh, about time? What was it? Is it about time? With the time travelling? Yeah, that is the time travelling. Yeah. Which, which takes on a different meaning. Thank you, Cheer. <laughs> yeah. But with that one, you, you can clearly tell that the townsfolk surely knows, oh, oh, this is crazy Twilight with her crazy antics again. Oh. <laughs> Remember when she brainwashed us all to like a doll? <laughs> we nearly <laughs> killed each other. Yeah. No, but still, but still, um, we're really diverting. We, we love to do this, don't we? Um, but overall, what you said earlier is true, that besides the princesses and um, the main six or the main five in this case, Twilight doesn't have any other friends. And it is nice to see that Twilight have friends outside of the main crew, which is Jade Singer. But that's only in the books. Yeah. yeah. Well, even then, just seeing it is nice. I mean, even if the books are second-tier canon, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it's always there and there's always that possibility. And part of the hope that the show will maybe take a cue. I wouldn't be against that. Oh, sure, sure. I don't mind that. I don't mind that too because um, while reading the book again, I can see that uh, most of the micro characters can make a comeback in the show. Although that would lead to any number of continuity arguments. Yeah. But you know, it would be fun for them to just, you know what, if you want to know, go buy the book. <laughs> that would be evil. <laughs> but still, you, you say Pony the Summer Drought. Well, we got the comics. Go buy them. The other, the other half of it on, on Twilight's character is that scene where she is identifying with Jade Singer about the pressure of success. Oh yeah. Jade Singer confesses that she peaked too early. That she mm-hmm. her first book was such a hit, she didn't feel like she could live up to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's Twilight, Celestia's pupil. Who, and we again, this is something we really don't get to see in the show. She feels she has to prove herself every day oh, to be worthy yeah. of that role. So, this is before she even became a princess. Oh, yeah, there yeah. was pressure. I think this escalated in um, lesson zero because yeah. we, we saw that Twilight was under pressure to deliver a letter to Celestia every single day. Oh, is it week? Every week, yeah. Yeah, every single week. So she's under pressure, and since nothing's wrong, nobody needs friendship help or anything, there it is. Like, she's cracking under the pressure. And yeah, Twilight can relate. To me, when I read the whole section in my head, oh, Jade, you got no idea. I'm the element of magic. On my first outing on Ponyville, I defeated Nightmare Moon. You got no idea how much under pressure I am. And she says in the comics that her friends celebrate her victories and catch mm-hmm. her when her fall. And the one reason Lesson Zero happened is that was the one time they didn't catch her. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, could they can, be... They can yeah, drop the ball there. Yeah. I think but, that, that's a whole other review for a whole other day. But, yeah. Yeah. 
But it all ties together. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But still, uh, I would say that this comic is not that bad. Um, all the hate that the book, oh, sorry, all the hate that this book got from the fans was not warranted, really. Not warranted, but again, I think it's fair to acknowledge that the Summer Main Jade Singer story. It had a slow start, mm-hmm. and uh, and later comics. This was the first one as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, not to not to go on a tangent, but if we go by first comic standards, the first one usually struggles. Oh yeah, Friends Forever. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, Friends Forever was yeah that one. Apple Apple Jack and Pinkie Pie. That one was not what I was expecting. No, but um, but this one I think it was a solid and stable. Insight. My question, though, is with the micros, I think it's good to show the character at their best and their worst. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Again, going kind of off topic to the rarity and pinky micros, Mm. they both showed them at their best. But they also had moments of weakness. Pinky's insistence on a circus pony has to remain a circus pony. Mm. Not really a strong, a good thing for her to say. But also in character. Oh, true. And rarity, Rarity's workaholic mentality <laughs> really shown through at the beginning. But then they bounced back. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Twilight, for her, her micro, rather than focus on, oh, she's so magical, which is focusing on power, mm-hmm. this focused on her personality, that she has a thirst for knowledge and a love of reading. And she uses that to connect with others. Mm, I do enjoy that. I mean, when you talk about certain micros, like the Rainbow Dash micro, that one, to me, was not good. Was not good. No, it wasn't. It, and the Fluttershy micro just fell apart for me. I, like, for me, the the Fluttershy micro was not that bad. I kind of enjoyed it. Um, When we, go, when we get there, we get there. I, I need to know why you don't like it. But when we get there, we get there. But still, like you said, certain characters have certain strong points and um, highs and lows. And that is really shown in the Luna Micro. Oh, yes. She she hits highs and lows more than any other pony with vocal emphasis for each moment. Uh, yeah, true that, true that. The Royal Pentelock voice. But with Twilight's Micro, I guess my question is, did we ever really get to see her low moment? We did, we did. And joining us, finally, is James Cork. Hey guys, finally got here. I'm sorry. Life got in the way and it took me a while to uh, get rid of it. But apparently it doesn't want me to get rid of her. So, shoot. It's difficult. It's difficult. Oh, it's cool, but it's cool. anyway, <laughs> let's go for it. You miss me derping on the synopsis. Next time, don't leave me alone with the synopsis. The, you know what? I think that what I should do is never leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be true. That'd be true. But what's done is done. But anyway, James, uh, me and Silver have been discussing a lot about the micro at length. But we want to know, what do you think of the Twilight Micro? I really liked it. Really hmm. liked it. Like, um, what... Okay, any comic that makes me emotionally sensitive and, and brings me to the edge of crying is is a good comic. It's a good story. It's a well-told story. Um, especially coming from a comic that is basically a one-man army effort because uh, Thomas Taylor, who is the, the author, he did the, he did the artwork, he did the writing, he did the letters, he did the coloring, he did everything. Oh, my. Actually, I have to make one correction. He did not do the coloring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That was Amy Meberson, right? No. No. Whatever. Rhonda Pattison. In fact, there's a, there's a there's there's an interesting uh, piece on Tom Zaylor's uh, b- website where he compares a change they made to Celestia's face between inking and coloring. Cool. Mm. And I have to be honest, the, uh, the inking looks far better. Celestia's face is hard to draw no matter what. <laughs> True. But somewhere along the line, the colorist really made Celestia's face a little more wavy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Her face, not her mane. Mane's always wavy. <laughs> yeah, the mane never stops waving. But yeah, that's the, that's the one thing is that if I have a gripe with the comic is that 
um, the design and the the way the the uh, the drawing and the color goes together it works with twilight and with um and with the other the the other uh library pony i don't remember her name what was her name Yate Singer, yes. It works really good with them. But Celeste and Spike mm. look very weird. And they, they, they have this very weird kind of like duck face <laughs> on them all the time. So that, that will be my one and only gripe with the comic. I love the way that, uh, oh, it's Twilight Sparkle Micro. What do you expect to happen? It's like, it's a massive adventure. It's like, uh, 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 uh something filled with magic and learning and all that. No, it's a library story. Mm-hmm. It's a, uh, it's it's a bottle episode. It all takes place on one location. Uh, if we don't count Canterlot at the beginning and the end of the comic, uh, it takes place between two. It, it happens between two characters. You can see the chemistry that they have, and they have a lot of chemistry, by the way. When they start geeking out, when they're having dinner, that's that's fantastic. And how the whole story ra- uh, um, uh, develops, and then it gives a genuinely good plot twist mm. that. Uh, uh, the library pony happens to be Jade Singer, and the Twilight knew all along because she ca- she uh, caught on with the clues. That is so cool. That was really cool, and I I really like that. And is it's funny because it's not a story about Twilight learning a lesson. It's a story about Twilight helping Celestia. Because Celestia wants to have Jade Singer come back into the spotlight, return after her massive success with the first book. Uh, she wants her to come back, and there is no other, uh, no one else who could do that than uh, Twilight. So mm. it's, it, it is a great, it is a really good comic. I, I didn't understand why so many people hated on it. Mm. It's, it's rather surprising that uh, they were calling it like uh, a, a piece of useless trite or something like that. They was like, come on, guys! I know it's not the best comic out of the bunch. It's not. It's not the best micro, but it's not that bad. True that, true that. Um, before we started, me and Silver kind of did a comparison on where do all the main six stack. Um, mine was Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Twilight, Fluttershy, and in uh, tight at fifth was Applejack and Rainbow Dash. Um, Silver was Rarity, Pinky, um. I give a little more props to Applejack, uh, then Twilight, then Rainbow, then at the bottom, hurting me so deeply, Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. So, James, what's your standing for the main six? My standing for the for the micro comics, uh, number one is easy. Uh, because it's rar- rarity is micro. Yeah, I mean, come mm-hmm. on. It, it's not so much that I am a huge fan of rarity, but it's also the one made by Andy Price and and Katie Cook. Mm-hmm. And the the writing is fantastic. The mm-hmm. artwork is amazing. So full of small references like Celestia superstar posters <laughs> and uh, another shout out to Fringe. Uh, you have Tara Strong so C singing on the background. That's so cool. Um, in the number two position, I will. I will put Pinkie Pies, uh, because one second, not only that it's awesome that it, the whole comic is based around a, a joke from the comic Watchmen, but also the way that it resolves in the end, that it's very much like a friend indeed, uh, but also because it's uh, it's it's more because it's a, prof, a teacher story, you know, mm-hmm. like the, the the character is frustrated he can, so he becomes a teacher. That's Actually, that that hits close to home. If you guys want me to tell you uh, later, or oh, maybe I can share. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll tell you later. On the number three position, I will put. Yeah, I will put Twilight's. Uh, I like it. I like it that much. Although in the third position, I will put Twilight's Fluttershy and Rainbow Dashes all together in the same one. Mm. And definitely, the one that I like the least is Applejack's. Oh uh, yeah. Ooh. I. I, yeah, I mean, the, the reason why I don't like the Applejack one is because they go back to the whole Applebuck season mm, uh, formula yeah. of of Applejack is stubborn. She doesn't want the help of her family. She thinks she can do it all herself. Here's Applejack being a silly pony. Da, 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 da. That's the only trait she has to her personality. <laughs> it has nothing to do with her being uh, loyal, honest, very reliable. You can count on her. She's upfront and doesn't scare of anything. And she accepts the, friend, the help of her friends like we saw in the cider, epi- in the cider episode. But no, she's back to being stubborn <laughs> because we like to hammer the fact that she's a very stubborn character. 
Boy, am I tired of that formula. <sighs> well, um, uh, that's a uh, discussion for another day. But still, uh, now at least we know how our standings are. And I'm quite surprised with Silver's answer with how Fluttershy is the least. But that's, like I said, a discussion for another day. But anywho, uh, we were discussing about the Twilight Micro and how we like it in uh, or how we like the story. And James, you came in swooping with awesome way of telling it's good. <laughs> I, I can't say anything more. <laughs> well, it's that I I don't think what else to say. Uh, it was the very first micro that got mm-hmm. released. And not only that, but it's the, it is the one and only comic in the entire series, both micro, Friends Forever, and the regular series, that only has one name on the cover. Oh, That, that is that. Sailor. So I was like, wait a minute. Who else did the artwork? Who else did the... And I was like, well, I mean, this guy did everything? So he took on the effort of not only making a comic on basically his, himself, uh, besides the, the, the colors, mm-hmm. uh, but he did the writing, the, the, the art and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was the very first of a new series, of a spin-off series, and it was about Twilight Sparkle, and it came out at the same time that they turned Twilight into an Alicorn princess. <laughs> really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It oh was the, it came it came out the week after and I remember it because I bought it on my on my Comicsology app on my tablet and I remember it because I bought it specifically to read it on the pl- on the plane flight from Scotland to Spain. Huh. And I bought it for that reason and that reason alone and it was like uh, and I really enjoyed it. I loved it and uh, I read it like a couple of times when I was in the plane. And uh, I was like, this comic is fantastic. Then I go on the internet and I see that everybody's hating on it. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? What? Really? Yeah, yeah. But I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty good. I just rocked and moved away because yeah. I, I didn't want it to get muddled. Uh, that'd be true, that'd be true. Because I too had that same feeling where, what? Everybody didn't like this? Why? So, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, it was good. For start of a new series, it was good. Not great, but good. I agree that uh, when I read people's comments, like, you know, I, I, I won't say that it gripped me right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, I think everyone knew pretty much from the moment they mentioned Jade Singer that it was gonna, the, the archivist would turn out to be Jade Singer. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until Twilight said, oh, yeah, I knew. That I was like, oh, hey, that's a good plot twist. What a twist. You're taking the cliché and putting a different spin on it, and that's where the real strength lies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Problem is, on the first read, you're going through, like, mm, around 16, yeah. 16 pages, and so you're just sort of saying, okay, come on, come on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, I think it's more fun on the second reading, but some people may not have given it that chance. Mm, true that, because um, I read it a second time before recording this, and it still got me choked up because of the ending. The last words that Celestia says is that thank you not just for bringing back an author and recovering this part of Equestria's culture that is so important, but thank you for bringing back my friend. Yeah. And I'm like, that is so pretty. I'm trying not to tear up when saying this. Uh, that, that really, it really gets me uh, in that it has, it has happened to, to me before, that kind of situation. Similar to, to the Pinkie Pie Micro, but it mm-hmm. happened to me before. So I'm like, this is so beautiful and mm-hmm. it's so good and it's so in character for twilight twilight is not an action girl she's not meant to like we have seen her in action of course she kick ha- she kicks ass in action but uh her natural environment is the library the solitude of a bookstore being in sa- sitting in front of, of a table or on her bed with a candle on the on the right and a book on her lap that's that's twilight mm-hmm. so Seeing her in this kind of environment, right? She's right in her um, in her in her element. Mm. It was fantastic. True that. True that. I couldn't agree more. I mean, for a first micro, it's good. It's not great, but it's good. You want great? Go read the Rarity arc. Go read the Luna arc. Those are great. Yes. But for this one, for first try, it's good. It's good. But also, you brought up a point, one other strength about this micro we haven't talked about, oh. and that is Celestia. Mm. My big, one complaint, or not complaint, criticism, complaint is that it upsets you. Mm-hmm. I 
my criticism of Celestine in the show is that she's entirely limited by her relationship to Twilight. That is all she is. She is Twilight's mentor. She's the one who assigns Twilight a mission. If she interacts with Twilight's friends, it's because Twilight Sparkle asked her to. Okay. This is the first time that this was the first case that I can recall. This was about Celestia having friends outside of Twilight. Mm. And yeah. while, yes, she asks Twilight to come and help her, but that makes sense. That's good sense. It kind of reminds us, hey, Celestia work, interacts with the rest of the world, too. Mm. But um, you're talking about Celestia interacting with other friends. Don't, don't forget that in her own micro, she did interact with an old friend, uh, one who helped her during the Nightmare Moon invasion, something like that. Remember? Actually, a, an earlier invasion. But yes, that's uh, that's why if we if we expanded the, to include all the micros, Celestia's micro would be number three in my book. Mm-hmm. Uh, be awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. if we were to include all the micros, my second one will be Luna's, of course. Oh Luna, Luna will be tight for first with rarity, just because Luna. <laughs> But this was the this comic, the Twilight Micro, that was the first time we got it. So the Celestia Micro expanded on that, but mm. this was the first sampling. Yeah. And that's and that's the cool thing about the comic books in general, because in the show we are limited to what they have, what they could do and what they want to sell. Honestly guys, the show goal is to sell toys. Do remember that. So we are limited. But the comic the comic is to sell the books, so they can do whatever they like. Almost whatever. So as Almost. long as they keep you buying the next one, too. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, I will, I will uh, pontify what, your guy, what you guys are saying is that, yeah, the toilet micro is definitely not great, but it's far from bad. Like, mm-hmm. if we were to take the rating system in Comixology, mm-hmm. uh, you know that at the end of... The, when you finish reading each comic, if it gives you the choice of rating it five from one star. to five, one to five stars, I will give it a four stars out of five. I will always uh, give it a five. <laughs> I will, I will give it a four out of five because I think it's it's a good comic, well done, but it's not spectacular. Like if you want spectacular, have the uh, hell. You know when I said that I had the Twilight, the Fluttershy, and the Rainbow Dash micros all tied mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. the same spot. Uh, I say that. Twilight's micro is great for the story and the character interaction. Mm-hmm. Fluttershy's micro is fantastic when it comes to visuals and how pretty it looks. Mm-hmm. And Rainbow Dashes is uh, great for the imagination and the creativity that it has. Mm. So it's like they are they they are all they are all on the same level, uh, different for different reasons. Mm-hmm. I I can totally see where you're coming from, and like I said, because if we were to just talk and discuss about the micros. This is going to take us more than one hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Although, I, you know what? I think that also one of the reasons why people were so kind of like um, uh, angry and kind of like uh, vindictive when it came to the first micro is that people didn't know what they were expecting. They, oh. uh, they, they, they just got from seeing Twilight fight Queen Chrysalis mm-hmm. uh, for the fate of Equestria at the end of the first uh, story arc. And then they are given this, and they think it's going to be some of the same, and they don't see the slice of life coming, mm, because yeah. that's that's what the micros are. They are basically they are slice of life in mm. every single one of them. Well, James, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm glad that you too see things like how uh, I do, because before um, before you came, I told um, Silver the same thing what you told us. And yeah, I, I don't see why because well, probably it was higher high expectations. Like oh, we just see Twilight kicking ass, but now she's just hanging out in the library. What? Yeah, yeah, and not only that, but it also comes like I said when Alicorn Twilight came out, and um... people were kind of like, oh, we saw Twilight. She's all powerful. She's the best. And why is she working on li- on a library with a pony we have never heard of before? Mm. Yeah, but, Ga- but still, guys, but still. what is this? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but but still expectations. Um, the people who put too high of an expectation got seriously depressed by it. For me, I just wanted to read. <laughs> so, anywho, 
uh, we can discuss a lot about the comics. We can go on and on because we really enjoy talking about this. But um, with any start, there need to be an end. And unfortunately, the end is now. But so anyway, um, I say let's go with rating the comics. And as for me, I have to say this is a good read. You should read it if you like Twilight. And I give it a 5 out of 5. Would read again. And James, what about you? Well, like I said already, I'll give it a four stars out of five uh, because it's a uh, it, it's a combination of like the artwork is not all that there. It works for some parts and not the others, but the story is fantastic. So I definitely I, this is one of the reasons why yeah I'll watch it for the plot. <laughs> I'll read it for the I'll read it for the story. So it is a uh, it is a it is a four out of five solid four out of five for me. Mm, awesome. And Silva, what about you? I've never really gone the numerical rating route. Route, but I'd, I'd recommend this to anyone for a good read, uh, fun character study, and also uh, read it twice. Once you get, once you see how it ends, it's fun to go back and and reinterpret the events with that ending in mind. Hmm. And I think people would be a little less critical if they took a deep breath, read through again, and said, "Okay, yeah, I'm seeing where it's coming from." Hmm. Or they may still not like it. Maybe it varies with each person. I also do want to give it props for having the best cover of the micro series. <laughs> oh, I, I I would say that the, to me the best um, cover would be the Luna micro cover. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's just funny to see Spike reading Twilight's fan Ooh, fiction. That one, yes. Okay, sorry. Because um, there's multiple covers, and the cover I always see is Twilight and Spike flying on a book. <laughs> but, oh yeah, that, that one's nice. But yeah. I love the one where it's. Spike is reading Twilight's fan fiction, and yeah, she yeah, is yeah, yeah. this grand sorceress with all these books <laughs> flying around her. Yeah, yeah, I, I take it back. That that is cool. <laughs> uh, they have been reading fanfic, haven't they? <laughs> well, there's no shipping involved, so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! But anywho, um, Yay. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for doing the review. And next review, we'll probably review another comic, something more epic, something more fun. Maybe, probably. But anyway, or maybe have, we will stick with the we will stick with the slice of life uh, micros. Mm. Um, that depends on what we do. Yeah, that depends true, on true. what we'll plan to. Yeah, if you see the clock on this recording about two hours long, well, it's going to be epic then. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork, and I continue to be Silver Quill. And we'll see you next review. Bye. Bye bye. Farewell. <laughs>